Hello, in this presentation we will take a look at a two-step closing process. In other words, we will perform the closing process using two journal entries. There's a couple different ways we can see the closing process, each of them having pros and cons. The two-step process is nice because it allows us to see net income broken out and being closed out directly to the capital account followed by draws, which is similar to what we see when we actually do the statement of equity meaning that when we do the statement of owner's equity we start with beginning balance and then we increase it by net income and decrease it by draws or dividends because this process is similar to that process it's often easy to remember it's the easiest for me to remember in any case so we will take a look at the two-step closing process first our goal once again we're going to go from the adjusted trial balance to the post-closing trial balance it's important to know where we stand in the process we're at the end of the process where the process is basically over and we're setting up for the next time period. So we've already entered all the normal transactions in the accounting department, the invoices, the bills and uh, the checks and whatnot. Then we have the unadjusted trial balance we put into our worksheet, our adjusting worksheet in order to then generate the adjusting journal entries to create the adjusted trial balance, which we use to create the trial balance, the financial statements with. Then we need to set up for the next time period. That's where we are at in the closing process. We're moving from the adjusted trial balance, getting our accounts ready for them to be recorded in uh, the next time period. The way we do that is we reset all the temporary accounts, all the accounts below the capital account. So remember that the adjusted trial balance is the same as the post-closing trial balance down to, well, including assets, liabilities, and then the equity section will differ our case we have a sole proprietor therefore we're talking owner's equity and we see that it's gone from uh, 658 820 to 742 800 and it's in essence been increased by all of this information all the temporary accounts below that owner capital account so our goal to make all these accounts go to zero to reset them so that they can start from zero and count up in the next time period and put those account balances into the owner capital account. Now, when we see this with a one-step process, we just started with draws and went straight down. But if we think about how this happens on the statement of owner's equity, typically we take net income and, in, and add it to the capital account. That's what we're gonna do first. We're gonna close out the income statement accounts, revenue, expenses, and we will then close that out, that 88,980, that will result from closing those accounts out to the capital account here in a similar fashion as we see in the statement of owner's equity. So we're just gonna build this as we go. We're gonna start with the revenue. We can see that the revenue has a credit balance. We're just gonna start with all the income statement accounts. And of course, revenue is the first income statement account. We can see that it has a credit balance here by the fact that it has brackets. We're gonna do the opposite thing to it to make it go down. We're just gonna do whatever we need to do to make these accounts zero. And then we'll see what to do once we get there. So we're just building our journal entry as we go. We're going to start with a debit to uh, the revenue or income or sales, whatever we call it, depending on the type of business and what they decide to call the revenue account. And we will debit it the opposite of what it is to make it go down. Once we then post it to our worksheet, we have a credit and then the debit will bring it down to zero. So we're just building our transaction as we go. We're going to build our journal entries as we go. The second piece, of course, will be wages expense. It has a debit balance. We're going to do the opposite thing to it to make it go down. So the opposite then is, of course, a credit. So we're going to take wages expense. We're going to credit it by that 195,870. Once we post that, then we have the debit balance followed by the credit, bringing the total down to zero. Then we're just going to continue this process next with the utilities expense. Utilities expense having a debit balance. Just like all the expenses, this, this uh, process will repeat itself because all the expense accounts will have debit balances. We're going to bring it down by doing the opposite thing to it. Therefore, we're going to create another piece to our journal entry, just creating the journal entry as we go, crediting, in this case, utilities expense for that 42375 Once we then post that, we've got the debit 42375 the credit 42375 bringing the balance down to zero. Next, uh, we're going to do the rest of them all together here. They're all the same. So we got insurance, supplies, depreciation, debit, 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 
because expense, 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 and therefore we are going to bring those down by doing the opposite thing to them. So here is the expenses that we're just adding to our journal entry. It's a long journal entry, but we're just building it as we go. And if we see this side by side as we post it, we can see why we're doing it and, and how we're just gonna construct this thing. So we're just gonna put a credit to the thousand, uh, to, to insurance expense, a credit to supplies expense, 2,925, a credit to depreciation of 1,100. And then if we post these three out, that will then do what we wanted to do, closing those account balances down to zero. Once we do that, we've done what we needed from the first of two journal entries. We've closed all of the income statements down to zero, but we're out of balance. We're out of balance here and we need to do something to fix that. What are we out of balance by? We're out of balance by net income because we closed out all the revenue and expense accounts, leaving us with that net income amount we need to record somewhere. If we calculate that on the journal entry, we can say, well, all the debits, I'm just adding up all the debits and I'm going back up to this journal entry we just made. If we just add up all the debits, it's of course 332, 250. If we add up all the credits, it's 243, 270, leaving a difference of 88, 980. That then is net income. And we're gonna post that to the credit here, capital account. So here's our, our completed first of two journal entries, debiting revenue for whatever we need to do to make it go to zero, crediting all the expenses for whatever we need to do making it go to zero, and then we're left with this credit of 88,980, which should be equivalent to net income, that giving us kind of a, a check. It's equivalent to the net income we had posted on the uh, financial statement before the closing process. It's equivalent to net income that could be calculated on the adjusted trial balance before we closed it out. Then if we if we post that, then we have the credit to the capital account. So we got the owner capital, then we're gonna credit it by that amount. And that brings the balance up to 747,800. Now this should kind of make sense. It should, you should see the parallel here or uh, think about the parallel here between calculating the statement of owner's equity, which starts with the beginning equity account, then increases by net income to get to the two and then it decreases by draws which we'll do next time to get to the ending capital account here instead of doing it with plus and minuses we're doing it with debits and credits we have a beginning amount of 658 870 because it's not including all of this stuff which is really part of the equity section not included in the capital account until we do this process then we increase it by doing the same thing to it a credit to a credit making the end balance 747 800 now we're left with just one temporary account that being a draws account not an income statement account not affecting net income but one that is temporary goes up with time one that needs to be reset at the end of the time period that will be our second journal entry it's, a, it's an easy one because it's, it's short but it's often confusing to know whether draws has a debit or credit balance if you have the trial balance in front of you it's a lot easier because we can look at the trial balance and we can see that this is going to be a debit balance here because it doesn't have brackets. So anytime you can have the trial balance in front of you, if you're doing multiple choice questions and if you can have a, multi, a mock trial balance in front of you, recommend doing that. It'll answer a lot of questions. So we've got this 5,000. We're going to do the opposite thing to it to make it go down, which is a credit. And we don't have the other side yet, but if we just build this as we go, we're going to credit draws. So we'll credit draws, bringing the account balance down. And then the other side is going to go to capital. And this should seem familiar as well if we think about the, the statement of owner's equity. Remember what happened. We started with the beginning balance, not including all this information here. We increased it by net income, which was this first journal entry. And then we decrease it by the draws, which is the second journal entry. And that's going to be the same process we see in the statement of owner's equity. We're left with 742,800, 742,800 and we achieved our goal of zeroing out all the temporary accounts now being ready for the next time period to start counting at zero. That 742,800 also found here on the statement of owner's equity. So when we see the adjusted trial balance, note that you'd have to add all of this up to get to that ending number, that 742,800 that we see now on the post-closing trial balance. 
So we only have this number here now because we crunched all this up to that one number. When we sell the, the statement of owner's equity, note the process is much the same. We had the beginning balance, 658,820, this number here, net income, 88,980, that number there, we're increasing it, less, minus, draws, 5,000, 5,000, that is the difference, this minus this, 83,980, so our beginning balance here, uh, plus the difference, which is net income, minus draws, gives us our ending number, 742,800. That is similar to what we did in our closing process. Beginning balance uh, plus the net income minus the draws giving us the 742,800. 742,800.